personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Mutual fund periodic investment average cost calculation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, we're in the icon left-hand side, practice problem tab, and the 13111 mutual fund periodic investment average cost calculation tab. Also, take a look at the immersive reader tool, the practice problems typically in the text area too, with the same name, same number, but with transcripts, transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages, either listened to or read in them. We're imagining investment in a mutual fund, remembering that as individual investors, we could invest in individual stocks and bonds, but typically we utilize the tools such as mutual funds and ETFs, pooling our money together with other investors. The fund then investing in a broad array of securities in accordance with the structure, the terms of the fund, like stocks and bonds, generally allowing us more diversification. Also, remember that if you're investing in a retirement type of account, 401k plan or an IRA or something like that, you can usually think of that as basically a mutual fund under the umbrella of a 401k plan or an IRA, which has tax implications and has implications in terms of restrictions on when you can pull the money out, but they're not completely like separate in your mind oftentimes because usually you're using the tool of say some kind of mutual fund under the umbrella of some kind of tax shelter, some kind of retirement type of account. Now, keeping that in mind, the question then comes up, if I'm gonna make investments periodically, possibly saving for something like retirement, how am I going to be making those investments? When's the best time to be putting my money into the investment? Now, when we think about this concept, we can think about it in a similar way as we were investing in an individual stock or if we're investing in a mutual fund. For most investors, individual investors, we're probably putting our money periodically into something like a mutual fund, like a retirement account, like an IRA or a 401k or something like that. Now, the idea, the general idea would be that if you're looking at the short term and you're investing in something that's going to be invested in stocks, then there's going to be a lot of volatility in the short term oftentimes. And obviously, we would like to be then investing at basically the bottom point. That's when we would like to buy uh, when we're putting money in. And we might be putting money in basically on the long term. But we don't really know when the bottom is on these short term ups and downs. And we're hoping on the long term, if we're investing over like 30 years or something like that, that we have a pretty good upward trend over that that long-term time frame, even though when we zoom in, there's more dips and valleys on the short term. So one way, the easiest way to kind of make our investments would be, I'm just going to be putting money in periodically, whatever that periodic interval will be for most pe people that would be with their pay. So meaning every time they get a paycheck, you automatically be putting money into some kind of retirement plan, which is basically like a mutual fund oftentimes, although under the umbrella, of, uh, of a retirement plan, which could have tax benefits and some, some restrictions related to the money. So if that's the case, then you're gonna be putting money in whenever you get paid, weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly, or monthly. And sometimes you'll be putting money in at, at the best point when the price is lower on these short-term intervals, sometimes in the middle, sometimes at the peak, but hopefully you're just basically gonna average out over time. And since you're a long-term investor, the idea is that, uh, that, that you should be good on the long term. That's kind of the easiest thing to do. That's the hands, most hands-off kind of thing to do, the least stress kind of thing to do. Now, there are some more complex methods that you could get into and try to say, okay, is there a way that I can try to start investing more when I could see a dip in the market? So when it's going down, I'm going to be investing into, the, into the, basically the dip so that I buy more at the, at the lows on the short term, you know, speaks, peaks and, and valleys. You can try something like that, but it gets a little bit more confusing when doing that because then, you, then oftentimes you're gonna be basically kind of holding on to your money when you're at the peaks and you're gonna be waiting for when to be putting money in at the troughs, for example, and it's gonna be very difficult. You can't really time exactly when the bottom is and when, it, when the top is. And oftentimes it leads us to do more speculation when we try to invest in that way as well. And if we invest based on our fear 
then what will happen is is we're going to invest at exactly the wrong time oftentimes right because when the stock market uh, is doing quite well it, its sentiments are high so we actually tend to want to be putting more in because we think it's just going to keep going up forever that everybody thinks that that's why it keeps going up at that point in time and when it goes down we got the idea that it's going to go down forever and so we might in, be incentivized to not only not put money in but even try to take money out which is oftentimes you can get on the wrong side of the cycle so as individual investors oftentimes we just invest like periodically is a good long-term strategy okay so keeping that in mind we're gonna have our periods of x1 x2 x3 x4 we're gonna say these are years but remember that you could think about this in terms of of uh every paycheck every two weeks every week same kind of concept now as you're doing your investments it could be nice to just have a little table down here with your investments we're gonna have the year the investment the price the number of shares and this is what we want to consider how many shares we're basically purchasing as we put in a fixed amount of investment in each paycheck for example or each period total shares uh, total value the change the total investment and the gain or loss and we can actually plot this down here which we do do in excel so this is a nice little table you can put together and follow your investments and basically track it in excel if you so choose so you can go to our practice problem in excel if you want to do that so we've got a, a standard amount that we're going to be putting in each each pay period although we're putting in a standard amount we know that the price per shares of the mutual fund not an individual stock the mutual fund is what we're buying the price of the mutual fund will change over time so we're going to be buying different numbers of share even though we're putting the same dollar amount of investment in so for example in x1 we're going to say that we're going to put in 1300 because that's just what we've decided to put in the price is 50 dollars at that point in time so if i take the 1300 divided by 50 dollars per share we bought 26 shares of the mutual fund so then if we say in year two or this could be pay period to the next two weeks to next week whatever your pay period is whatever and a next standard interval we're going to pay another 1300 but now the price has gone down which notice that's not good for our original event investment because we bought them at 50 dollars and now the, those those 26 shares we had before actually went down in value so that's not good we lost money but from a purchasing standpoint notice if we were trying to analyze should we be purchasing in the short term we're going down into this trough so now you're thinking I don't know when the bottom is but if you were trying to guess you might be saying well I'm going to buy into the trough right because I'm going to buy as the things are dipping I'm going to buy in the downturns possibly so but we're just we're just putting money in each time but if you were trying to figure out uh, in more detail trying to trying to guess where the bottom is you might be investing trying to invest more when it, when the money's when the uh, curve is going down but in any case we're going to say we got the 1300 divided by the 31 so we bought we we put in the same amount of money but now we got way more shares because the share price is of course lower so the total shares we have now before we of course had 26 shares and now we bought another 4194 so we've got 26 plus the 41.94 is going to give us that 6794 shares the value at this point in time was it was before we had 26 shares and they were valued at 50 dollars. that's where we get the 1300 but now those shares went down even those shares those 26 shares are now only worth 31 dollars because they went down but we bought the more shares as well so at this point in time we've now got all shares are now 67.94 which are now valued because it's the same mutual fund which is diversified portfolio within the mutual fund times 31 we hope it's diversified enough so that's going to be the 2106 is the total value the change then the difference between the two is the 2106 minus the 1300 we've got the uh 806 the investment before was 1300 we of course now put 1300 in two times 1300 plus 1300 total investment is now at the 26 and we've got the gain or loss at this point we've got uh, a loss of the 494 and that's going to be our total investment because we put in 2600 and the value at this point in time is 2100 so minus 21 
to 106 to 106 that's the 494 okay so then in year three we're going to put in the same dollar amount year three you could think of similar process with a period three second week three you know every two week third two week period now the price is 44 so it's still lower than the original price but it went up from 31. so now you can imagine like if i'm on the short term we'd be here we'd be going up again on the upside of the trough now if you were trying to figure out what's the best time to be putting money in when you're on the upside of things you might be saying well i'm not going to be putting money in as the as we're going up right or i'm going to try to put less in maybe as we go up if i was trying to guess what's going on with the market because i want to be buying into the downturns into the dips for example so you could try to come up with methods so that you're trying to buy into the dips but again that could be difficult because you end up with these long time periods possibly where you're holding on to money when the market is going up for long periods of time and so on so we're just investing every period right every whatever two weeks one week in this case year so now we we're going to say we put in the same 1300 divided by the 44 dollars that's going to be 29.55 shares how many shares do we have now well before we had 67.94 we bought another 29.55 we're now at the 9748 the total value then those 97 shares 97.48 are all valued because they're all in the same mutual fund at the current price of 44 that's the market price so that's going to be the 4289 the change the difference then is going to be 4289 minus the 2106 so there's a difference of the 2183 the total investment then is now 1300 plus 1300 plus 1300 or 1300 times uh three and then we've got the total investment at the three nine the total investment hold on a second i typed in to the wrong three nine oh oh minus the value which is four two eight nine so now we at least have a gain of the three uh eighty nine then in year four or period four week four two week period for whatever another 1300 now it went up to 52 so now we've cleared what the original price is again if you were trying to figure out should I be in investing you might be saying well now it looks like I'm closer to one of these peaks in the short term so maybe you would say I'm not going to invest but again you could end up in a situation where that where it just keeps going up and you end up holding on to money and so on and so on and driving yourself crazy right so instead we're going to be we're to using the strategy that we're just investing every period every two weeks every week as we said or so on even though it looks high at this point we're not sure it's the peak because it could keep going up at that point right we, we wouldn't know in real time whether it's going to go up or down so then we're going to say okay so now we got 1300 but now it costs 52 dollars. so we only get 25 new shares from that we had before 97.48 plus 25 that gives us to the 122.48 now although we only got 25 new shares the fact that it went up to 52 dollars is good because that means all the other shares that we had also went up to the 52 dollars right so it's not a good buying time but we like the market going up because that's good for what we're holding on to clearly so we're gonna i mean we if we were trying to if we knew exactly where the dips were we would be buying the dips but celebrating the rises right okay but okay so here we go we're gonna take that and multiply that times the price of 52 because all our shares are worth 52 dollars to get the total value of the 6369 about the change is the 6369 minus the 4289 so we got the 2080 the total investment is now we have invested 1300 times 4 uh, 5200 and then the gain or the loss at this point is going to be then we've got the uh, 5200 investment and the value at this point in time is 6369 and that gives us our gain of 116 uh, six nine so you can you can imagine if you build this table in excel we'll put the totals down here but you might not have the totals and you just keep on running this down each week as you put more money into the investment or periodically and you can actually you can actually then have a nice table of what's going on you can have a nice table showing what's happening with the price as you go a nice table showing the number of shares 
and uh, the, the total shares going up and you could plot those and the total value, this is probably the thing that you're gonna be most likely plotting, right? You got the total value and then you got the change, you've got the total investment, which you can add, add up and you've got the gains and losses. Uh, so then the average cost then is going to be the 42. The average cost, meaning we then had the investment of 5200 and we ended up with 122.48 shares, right? Divided by 122.48. So average, it costs around $42. Notice that it started off costing 50, then it went down to 31, and then up to 44, and the 52 average 42, 46 over that time frame. Now, then again, you could plot this out, which could be which could be a nice, really nice tool in Excel to give you a nice, quick kind of a, a graphic. And again, you can plot, you can add to your table periodically as you go, and then you can come down here and say, okay, what's been going on lately? This one we plotted out the total value. So the total value and the total investment, we've got the periods down here, period one, two, three, four, and five. And then of course the total investment went up uh, static because it's a straight line because we're investing just the 1,300 per period. And then we can see that we had this dip from the total value went under because it actually went down here. So we could see that here it went from the 1,300, even though we put 1,300 and again it went up, it went down to 2,106 because we had that loss on the second one right right there and then you could see it kind of broke even at this point here uh, between period two and period three and then of course now we've got the total value outpacing the investments which is what we want to see so the total value at the 4289 so right there, and then it goes up to 6369, which is right there outpacing the investment, which ended off at the 5200, uh, which is nice. So again, this table, you can plot your own kind of table in Excel and just keep on having your running balances go down here and have a pretty easy, like quick, quick visual that keeps you more actively involved than possibly just passively looking at a, a graph on some other on some other chart for the investment as a total as a whole and that can hopefully that gives a lot of people more uh, feeling of activity in the investment although it can also lead to anxiety when you see something like this happening down here when the market goes down and and it's hard to remember that we are long-term investors usually if you're investing long term for retirement and so usually if you keep a strategy like this uh, you're better off than than at least acting in terms of fear, right? You're, you're better off than saying, I'm gonna act when I'm uncomfortable, right? Because that's what that's what drives the market to, to have the peaks and troughs. You're gonna end up, if you act out of fear when, when things are going up, you're gonna be buying at the peaks because that's that's what the that's what the animal instincts or what do they call it, will, will are at right there and you're gonna be following the crowd. And then when it gets to the trough, we're gonna be scared and saying we're going into, it's recession times are never gonna be good again and you'll uh, end up selling everything at that point in time. So you, to avoid that, you, that's one reason you kind of do a periodic investment kind of strategy. Although again, you could try to do some more strategies where in the short term, you try to, you try to buy into the dips you know when possible a little bit a little bit more but but you never know when the bottom is so that that's difficult and that also leads to to more kind of stress if you're not uh more engaged in your in your investments if you're more of a passive investor then you might just invest periodically plot your graph out so you feel actively involved in it and remember you're looking at the long-term time horizon if you're investing for retirement or it's like 20 years out or something like that so the short-term peaks and troughs, you've got to take a step back and, and visualize that. How's that going to work out in the long run? Hopefully you'll be okay is the general theory.